Good morning. My name is Kenny Lee. I'm the pastor at Marvel and Lexa United Methodist Churches. On behalf of both congregations, we want to welcome you to this morning's online worship service. We hope today that you encounter God in a new way, that you leave this time that we share challenged and refreshed, ready to meet the coming week. I have a few announcements I'd like to share with you this morning before we begin. Drive-in worship will be 10 a.m. this morning, and we will worship in the parking lot at 10 a.m. every Sunday, and with the exception of days that it rains. We are planning a yard sale on July 17th and 18th. Orders for squash relish have to be in by July 6th at 6.50 a jar. You are invited to a virtual and drop by a baby shower for Emma Schaffhauser Hackett and Blakely Eden on Sunday, July 12th at the Cottage Mall and Cafe in Brinkley. Remember to watch your daily devotions every day. Don't forget to let Nana know that you're watching the service online. You may send your offering in to Post Office Box 669 or drop that by the night deposit box at the water department, or you can take that by during regular business hours. If you would like to mail an offering to the Lexa United Methodist Church, send that care of David Treadway, box 22, Lexa 72355. Before we begin this morning's worship, let us enter into a moment of prayer together. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for this new day that you have gifted us. We thank you for the warmth of summer. We thank you for grass that's green, for the trees that grow. Lord, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit that resides in our hearts, that empowers us to right living, that, that sends us out into our community to lead, to teach, and to offer care. Lord, we pray today that that same spirit that lives in us would live in this time and space that we share in this virtual worship service. God, we ask that you would be present with those who watch with us. God, and we pray that all of our lives be changed and that you send us out to be catalysts for positive change in our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Our hymn of praise this morning is God of the Ages. This is found in your worship bulletin. If you did not receive those via um, snail mail with your church newsletter, you may access that in a PDF form on umcmarvel.org. In the newsletter section, you'll find a link there. Just press that and you can print that off. If you need to take a moment at home and go and find that, I encourage you to just hit pause. It's easy to do. Go and find your worship bulletin and then come back and you'll have the words to this song. Let us sing together. Whose almighty hand is forth in beauty of the starry band of shining worlds in splendor through the sky. Our grateful songs before thy throne. Thy love divine that led us in the past in this free land with thee our lot is cast be thou our ruler guardian guide and say thy word our law thy paths our chosen way from wars alarms from deadly pestilence be thy strong arm forever should defense thy true religion in our hearts increase thy bounteous goodness nourish us in Thy people on their toilsome way. Lead us from night to never-ending day. Fill all our lives with love and grace divine. I invite you to join with me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us sing the glory of Patre. to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever 
like to share with you some of the joys and also the concerns of our community. Of particular joy to me is the fact that I had my whole family home for 4th of July. We had a quiet holiday, enjoyed a beautiful fireworks display downtown at the baseball park last night. That was a very well attended event and there were more than just the fireworks that the um, city put on, there was also some fireworks that were being done in an, ad an adjacent area, and so it was quite exciting. At this time, I invite you to say aloud some of the things that you are thankful for over the past week. Our prayer requests are as follows that God would continue to protect us from the coronavirus and that a cure will be found. We pray for the unrest in the world, our church family, Miss Bobby Von Cannell is in Methodist Hospital in Germantown, Christy Davidson, Cindy Perkins, Kay McGeehee, Lanny Travis, Chuck Ward, Bobby Steiner, Mildred Clatworthy, Ralph Clemens, Bobby Turner, James Guest, Laura Dietz, Saren, Karen Sipes, Tim Thomas, Olivia Coy, Veronica Hernandez, Rochelle Wolf, Mary Ann Parker, Richard Bass, Katie Jacks, Hugh Jacks, Rhea Cumberland, Dolores Jackson, Danny Vondren, Darlene Wooten, Courtney Turner, Luke Schaffhauser, Sherry Lynn Kimmer, Scott Russell, Bridget Polk, Debbie Hayes, Glenn and Deb Hosey, Frankie Broom, Jimmy and Betty Davison, Vivian Word. Louis Acock, Larry Moeller, Gloria Higginbotham, Ruby Jean Turner, Opal Muscolino, Jimmy and Donna Allen, Amira Marshall, Ian Miller, Doug Moreland, Drew Perkins, Richard Brady, Pam Catlett, Brian Broussard, Stanley Bartlett, Andrea Cabot Dillard, Gary Henson, George Yonke, Raleigh Kate Haas, B.J. Russell, Anna Marie Waddell, Charles Lushner, Lottie Potts, Jay Yarbrough, Stephanie Sanderlin, James Scaife, Estella Johnson, Levitris Thomas, Lawana Newsom, Leonard Franklin, Sandra Carlton, James Miller, Sherry Perkins, Shirley Schwind, Ken Fratizi, Connie Chastain, Debbie Hickman, Tammy Turner, Jake Catalus, Shannon Hinkle Stewart, Jay Bach Rorschab, Charlie Jones, Danette Walker, Sherry Moore Jones, Charlotte Wooten, Mickey Guthrie, Pat Delk, Shaughnessy King, Barrett Michael Miller, Miranda Rocca, Trey Wallace, Kaylee McDonald, Carol Spencer, Carrie Simmons, Jimmy Oliphant, Van Cooper, Billy Moore, Sherry Tamanillo, Alan and Pam Wildshoots, Kevin Forster, Landon Jones, police officer, medical personnel, first responders, our local, state, and national leaders, victims of the coronavirus, the family of Bobby Russell, the family of Carol Griffin. 
We have prayers of thanksgiving that Bobby Von Campbell's surgery went well and that Veronica Hernandez got a great report. If you have a prayer request this morning that you would like to lift up, I invite you to take a moment and to say those out loud. I invite you to pray with me. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for this new day. God, we thank you for the way that you show your love toward us. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, whose life, death, and resurrection have enabled us to die to our old lives, to be raised to a new life in Christ, and to daily take up our cross and follow him. Lord, today we offer you thanks for the good things that you have given us. We thank you for a country in which we can be free. God, we thank you for people who are willing to serve their country in various capacities. God, we thank you for every person who, past, present, and future, serves in military service. We thank you for the freedoms that we enjoy in this country, particularly the, the ability to worship you in the way that we each individually see fit. God, we ask today that you would give us new strength, renewed vigor in our Christian walk, that you would teach us your ways, O oh God, that you would lead us through the power of your Son, Jesus Christ, through the presence of your Spirit, Lord, into the very presence, the very throne room of Almighty God, where we are allowed to access because of your Son, Jesus. Lord, there have been people in our community who have lost a loved one. We pray for them today. We pray that they would know your peace, that they would know your comfort. Lord, that they would rest in the surety that their loved one has gone on to their reward and that they rest safely in the arms of Jesus. We pray today for those who would conduct the services of memorial. God, we pray for those in our community who are sick, and there are a number of people who are sick, God, and we ask that your Holy Spirit be poured out on them. We've read their names, God, but you know them intimately, inside and out. You know everything about them. Every single part of their body is, is familiar to you, God, and so we ask that your Spirit be poured out, that that healing that they so desire would begin to be facilitated in their body, whether it's through divine intervention or medical science or a combination of both. God, we yield to your will. We pray that their bodies would return to a better state of health. We thank you for those healings that we have already received in our community, God, because we know that you're a God of healing. For those in our community who yet do not know you, Lord, we pray for their salvation, that your Holy Spirit would be active in their lives, that you would speak into their hearts, God, and draw them to the cross, draw them to your son, Jesus, in order that they might be redeemed through his blood. We, the people of God, offer you the prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We pass the offering plate in a virtual way in this morning's worship. We remind you that as a Christian, our offering is a response of gratitude toward God's continued <coughs> favor, towards God's mercy and grace. And I would remind you that none of us can ever outgive God and that God has all the cattle on a thousand hills, but God invites us into a co-creative partnership with him that allows us to contribute to the needs of this church family, this church building and the staff that work here, and also allows us to reach out into God's broader world with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I would remind you that you may drop those offerings by 
the water department, or you may mail them to Post Office Box 669 if you're making a contribution to Marvel United Methodist Church, or you may mail those care of David Treadaway, Post Office Box 22, Lexa, Arkansas, 72355 if you're making a contribution to Lexa. Let us sing the doxology together. from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy For the next several weeks, last week and for the next four weeks, we will be walking through parts of Paul's epistle to the church in Rome. Last week we heard a good deal of the history of Paul, of Saul of Tarsus, of the church in Rome and some of the challenges they met and why it was so important for Paul, that's the Greek version of Saul's name, Paul, to be able to reunite the Roman church. And we have this basis for systematic theology in Paul's letter to the church in Rome. This morning we're going to read from chapter 7, and I'm going to begin with verse 13 because this is 13 is a conclusion of one of Paul's arguments, a summary, if you will. And then we will read through verses 25 at the end of the chapter. Did that which is good then become death to me? By no means. Nevertheless, in order that sin might be recognized as sin, it used a good thing to bring about my death, so that through the commandment sin might become utterly sinful. We know that the law is spiritual, But I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate to do, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature... For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law at work within me. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, a slave of the law to sin. This is the word of God for us, the people of God, this day. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, the understanding, and the living out of this word that we share. It is difficult for us to think of a person who wrote so much about the gospel, who carried out such a huge burden of missionary journeys who forged so many house churches all over 
the Roman Empire, it is so difficult for us to think of Paul as someone who has the same bent and propensity towards sin that all of us have. We think of Paul as a saint. We think of Paul as a holy person who is beyond reproach, who is leading a life worthy of the calling of Jesus Christ and is encouraging those who follow Jesus to emulate his own life. How can it be that Paul is subject to the same vagaries of the sinful nature that all of us continue to wrestle with? Well, a part of that answer is the human condition. Paul is a human being, which means he has feet of clay. He is carrying around the power of God's Holy Spirit in a broken clay vessel just like all of us. And while that dynamic Holy Spirit is at work in him to preach the good news of the gospel, to do signs and wonders in the places in which he goes to the point where people would bring folks to be prayed for or just take a piece of cloth that he had touched and lay that on people and they would receive healing. But, but Paul continues to struggle with sin in his life. Now, we're not talking about besetting sins, repetitive sins, sins that we all struggle with, that we can't seem to get out of that. We can't get out of the hamster wheel of sin. We can't get away from it because that sin is embedded in our old nature. And much of what we hear Paul saying in the first person are in fact words of the first Adam because sin is at work in the nature of humanity from all the way back in the, from those poor decisions in the fall back in the garden. Adam and Eve made the decision to take of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And because of that, humanity was driven from the garden and sin reared its ugly head to the point where Adam and Eve's eldest son killed his own brother and then lied to God about it following the murder. We all know the story of Cain and Abel. And Paul, who works diligently for the kingdom and works to exterminate that body of sin in his own life, Paul has become such a saint that his tolerance for sin is so small that the things that he is working on would seem completely insignificant to us. Because of the, because of the nature of sin that is inherent with our humanity and also that second nature that is imparted to us when we accept Jesus Christ, when we are justified before God, when we believe God's salvation plan that His Son Jesus Christ came to live, die, and then be resurrected from the dead, ascend into heaven and make mediation for us at the right hand of the Father, when we believe that God is who God says He is, and that God has done what God says He would do, we are justified before God. And it is just as if we have never sinned. That justification is illustrated at our baptism when we we die to our old nature and we rise to a new life in Christ. But there is the duality of those two natures that are at war within every human being who follows Jesus Christ. And the fact that there is a war going on proves that you are a child of God. Because if you are just a rank sinner, then all you can do is sin and that you become desensitized to the fact that there is sin in your life. Can you do better? Yes, we can all do better. But only through the power of the Holy Spirit. Only through the grace of God. This is not something that there's a boot camp for. We can't pick ourselves up by the bootstraps and and intend to do better because that that those levers of self-improvement only lead us to deeper, 
depths of self-absorption and self-destruction. It is only through faith in the work, the completed work, the finished work of Jesus Christ. And, and we can see in the scripture where Paul tells us that, that if we are in Christ, we are a new creation. The old is passed away. The new is come, but still still there is that battle going on inside of us. And it may be battles going on inside of us as God's Holy Spirit contends for our good, contends for our lives, contends to help us to improve our life, to move into a closer walk with God. Because sin is not just a disobedience to a particular rule or regulation. Sin is a distortion of our relationship with Almighty God. We cannot enter into the presence of God with sin in our lives. We have to allow God to hear our confession, to cleanse us once again of those sins that we have committed, and to restore us to a right relationship. And then we can come into God's presence. And we can cry out to him like small children would cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy. We can be just that familiar, just that close. And that is the relationship we were created for. That is the relationship that we long for. That's the relationship that we try to fill up with possessions, with acquisition, with status in the community, with education, and a laundry list of all of these things. And, and you would say to me, preacher, these are good things. And they are very good things. The law is a very good thing. And the law is a spiritual living word of God. But the law becomes death to us because it makes our sin known for what it is. It blows the cover of sin. And, and then sin runs rampant. In the life of a believer, it's only through Jesus Christ. This this passage of Scripture is so hard for us to get our minds wrapped around. It's so hard for us to understand the process of sanctification that God wants to take us through. And it requires us to do some hard work. Salvation that comes to us through faith in Jesus Christ when we receive that gift, that gracious, unmerited gift that God offers to us, we can only open our hands with, with open minds and open hearts and open hands receive that gift. But we have to be reminded that that gift cost Jesus everything. He gave his life in order that we might have salvation. The Bible says that he became sin for us on that cross, that he took all of the punishment of all of my sins, past, present, and future, and they were crucified with him on that cross. And I was crucified, the old me was crucified on that cross. And the new person has risen to a life of peace, a cruciform life, shaped by the cross of Christ, a life of following Jesus, of not thinking of myself more highly than I ought to, of not thinking of myself first, but of putting other people and their needs before my own personal needs. Every one of us is born with a selfish nature, but we must be reminded every day that Jesus has paid the price so that we can become new people. And, and while that battle is being waged within us, the war for our salvation has already been fought and won. When Jesus said on the cross, it is finished, that was the, an end of it. Sin is still sin. Sin is still at work in this 
in this world, sin still reigns in the hearts and lives of so many people. That is why it's so important for us to take up our cross every day and to follow Jesus. Why it is so imperative that we allow the work of the Holy Spirit to be, to be continually performed in our life so that when God touches a sin in our hearts, a sin that we know it is sin, that God has revealed to us is something wrong and something that separates us from God, that we allow the work of the Holy Spirit to help us, to come alongside of us, to give us the power and the will to overcome that sin and to live a victorious life in order that we might move on toward perfection, that state of sanctification, that being perfected in love that is so much a distinctive in our Wesleyan tradition. Now, it may be that, like most people, we never know that state of perfection until we go on to be with the Lord, and, but that does not relieve us from the responsibility to become like Paul, to become a saint who is working on sins that are so small that others might feel that it's insignificant. I don't know about you, but I've got some big things that need to be worked on in my life. I have needs that the Holy Spirit can is the only person who can fill. I have, I have requirements in my life that only close communion with Jesus Christ will ever rectify. I have a need to move onward and upward toward the goal that is the prize that awaits us, a goal that I have, alongside of Paul, have yet to attain, but that I strain toward on a regular basis to receive that crown of life, to receive that ultimate victory, to one day come into the presence of my Savior and hear, well done, Good and faithful servant, you have been faithful over a few things. Enter into the kingdom that has been prepared for you from the foundations of the earth. I pray today that you put on the full armor of God and that you, alongside the Holy Spirit in the power of Jesus Christ, as a redeemed child of God, Continue to wage that war, to fight that battle that goes on between those two natures that are inherent in each of us, and that you feed that spiritual man, and that you deny that fleshly person, that carnal nature that lives inside of you, in order that you might find the way that leads to life. In the name of God the Father, Son, and Spirit, Amen. Our final hymn this morning is Come Thou Fount. Come Thou Fount of every blessing Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Tune mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me song, melodious sonnet. Sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it. Mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure Safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, Wandering from the fold of God, He to rescue me from danger, Interposed His precious blood.
Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it, prone to thee, the God I love. My heart, Lord, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Receive this benediction. Understand that you have everything you need to fight the battle that goes on in your life every day. That you can meet the challenges of a new day, a new week, a new month with the power of God's Holy Spirit alive and at work in your life. Learn to put on the full armor of God, to take up your sword of the Spirit, to fight that battle and to understand the wars already won. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen.